Jupiter. As if it wasn't a wonder already, Juno has certainly reignited the imagination. In the introductory episode, we looked at modulation of various solar cycles and activity phenomena associated with planetary geometry, and since Jupiter's 11-year orbit with a sprinkle of Saturn was hypothesized in 2008, 2012, and in the most recent related manuscript from 2018, we'll start there. It is noteworthy that in 2016, we also covered the hypothesis that slight variations in the solar cycle were due to Earth and Venus being the sprinkles to Jupiter's influence rather than Saturn. But we also showed that doubt had been expressed. In fact, quite a bit of it. But not about the statistical correlation. It is found to be about gravity. Gravity is the only avenue of investigation explored, and to be sure, there is absolutely no chance in this universe or any other that Jupiter's tiny tug on the sun is going to do it. But here is where a lesson in space weather could do large-scale physicists and mathematicians some good, because here it's not just about gravity. Earth isn't the only magnetic sphere in this system. Jupiter's fields are 10,000 times stronger. The suns go out past Pluto. Every planet is magnetically connected to the sun, shown in black and white dash curves on the endal spiral, and traced back to coronal holes always to coronal holes, where the fields are shaded darker to show that they stream out to connect to the planets, while the bright white lines would be the magnetic fields that loop back down to the photosphere. The interplanetary connection fields may be easier to see if we reverse the color, making the internal loops black, and the white lines being the interplanetary fields connecting to the planets, coming from white coronal holes. The sun's fields are paramount to the electromagnetic environment of the entire system. By the way, those are not concentric circles in any color, but spirals, helical outflows of magnetism. It is no wonder that magnetic portals connect the planets to the sun. A better name could have been chosen by NASA, but it's what we've got. And for each of the planets and comets and everything else in the electric field of solar wind, there are flux transfer events indicating that direct connection to the sun exists. On Mercury, it happens very often, while on Earth it is every eight minutes, and on Jupiter, it is a significantly longer scale, still far less than a day, though. Same for Saturn. It is remarkable just how similar the spheres in this system behave electromagnetically, despite their vastly different chemical compositions. And it is in the interaction with the Sun, magnetically, that we find the potential here for there to be a modulating factor beyond just gravity. Whether it's NASA or professors or the ESA, there is no question that in addition to the outflowing fields, there are return segments as well. Indeed, half of those arrows are pointing back towards our star, and which hemisphere that dominates flips with the 11-year cycle. The field flow can also be shown in relation to the heliospheric current sheet. You see two segments of outflow, two of inflow towards the sun. The positive dominance plus signs in the outflow and the minus signs are the flow back to our star. This represents Earth crossing the heliospheric current sheet as the sun rotates one time and we experience each magnetic sector twice. Let's also remember that all planets emit ions themselves, mostly negative except for Saturn who refuses not to act like a star, but on Earth that's oxygen, negatively charged, and who really knows what that is at Jupiter? The planets are all connected to the sun through these magnetic portals. They exchange plasma, and these connections don't disappear just because you have flipped solar hemispheres in the heliospheric current sheet. Further, by chemical emission of the planets, one can see numerous Birkeland pathways, field-aligned currents of that material, back to the sun during the return field experiences. The point is that these planets do not just interact gravitationally, and if we're talking about perihelion, the closest point in orbit to the Sun, then electrical loading modulation over orbital periods becomes important to activity. It is already widely believed that the magnetic fields of the Sun are what is driving the sunspot cycle of 11 years, and there is utterly no way to argue that those fields are disconnected from the planets. See you next time, and be safe everyone.